This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 404. Create a morning routine in three easy steps by Kara Harvey of a purposedrivenmom.com. Hey, I'm Joss Marie, and today I've actually got a post from Kara Harvey, a new author here on my show. She's a stay at home mom who also works as a virtual mentor to other moms. She helps them design a life they love, feel less frazzled, and reach their goals. I love having new authors and content here on the show, so totally reach out to us if you have a new author in mind that you'd like me to narrate from. You can get in touch with us right at oldpodcast.com. But with that, let's hear how Kara suggests to create a morning routine and start optimizing your life. Create a morning routine in three easy steps by Kara Harvey of a purposedrivenmom.com. How to Create a Morning Routine as a Busy Mom As a busy mom, a simple morning routine is important. Without one, mornings are chaotic and stressful, and you can wake up feeling more behind before the day even gets going. I love routine. I completely thrive on having a good system for myself and my family, and without it, I feel lost. While I don't think you need to have a super strict schedule that you stick to each day, I do believe there is power in a routine. Not only does a routine help your family know what to expect, but it allows you to be more productive, get more done, and feel less overwhelmed. If you aren't sure where to start in gaining more control over your day, I highly suggest beginning with your morning routine. A solid morning routine will help you start your day strong, be in a better mood, and eliminate a lot of stress. Here are three easy steps for creating your morning routine. Number one, get up earlier. While I know getting up earlier isn't the most popular suggestion, it really is the most important. I get it, getting up early is no fun, but you can train your body to become a morning person. I don't think you have to start with jumping into a 4 a.m. wake-up call, but you can most definitely ease into it. I am a mom like you. My kids rarely sleep through the night, and at the time of writing this blog, I still have a newborn. My body is tired. But when I wake up with the kids rather than before the kids, my day is completely different. I smile more and am less annoyed and snippy with them. And hey, isn't that something we all want as moms? Start by slowly getting up earlier and earlier each day. This is a great way to trick and train your body without feeling like it's a super daunting task. For example, if you've been rolling out of bed at 7.30 when you hear the kids, Then tomorrow, set that alarm for 7.15 and do that for a few days. It won't give you a lot of time, but enough time to have a few minutes of quiet. Every few days, move that time up. Go from 7.15 to 7 to 6.45 and so on until you hit your desired wake-up time. For me, that's 5 a.m., which I always thought was an ungodly hour, but once it became a habit for me, I started to cherish that quiet time and realized how much I really could get done without little people at my feet. Number two, tell your time what to do. Getting up earlier is great, but if you don't make a plan for how you are going to spend that time, then 45 minutes can fly by really quickly and you're still scrolling Facebook, have accomplished nothing, and got up earlier for no reason. I recommend creating a list of the tasks you know will get you off to a good start. Don't overplan and put a million things on a list. Instead, come up with three to five things that you know will start your mindset off right and make you feel accomplished. There is nothing better than having some things crossed off your to-do list before the rest of the house is up. My morning always starts with a workout, followed by time in the Bible and prayer while I cool off, and a shower. If I can get those things done in my morning, then I'm on top of the world. As a stay-at-home mom, self-care often gets put on the back burner. So to take that time to fuel my body, mind, and spirit will make a difference throughout the day. And honestly, if it doesn't happen early in the day, it is pretty unlikely to actually get done. I also have added in a few homemaking tasks I like to accomplish, including unloading the dishwasher, starting a load of laundry, and actually drinking a hot cup of coffee. Yes, moms, that is an actual thing. It can be super hard to get in a workout with your kids around, but I found a great tool to be beach body on demand. I can stream all of my workouts, and they have hundreds to pick from right from my phone. 
It allows me to be an example for my kids, get them involved, and I get to work out in my pajamas. And number three, eat a frog. Mark Twain said, eat a live frog first thing in the morning and nothing worse will happen to you the rest of the day. In other words, if you get a task you know you have to do but don't want to off your list right away, the rest of the day is a piece of cake. After my normal morning routine, I normally have 20 to 30 minutes, depending on when the kids wake up, to do something else. I could just scroll social media or waste time checking emails, but instead, I eat a frog. My frogs aren't always something I don't want to do, but are often things I need to do but can put off. Examples include writing thank you cards, finishing up last minute touches on blog posts, folding laundry, making my meal plan for next week, or balancing our checking account. Add a frog to your morning checklist and you'll feel on top of the world. I keep a note on my phone of frogs as they come into my head day to day, so I can just pull one from there when I am planning my morning. Now it's your turn to get started to own your mornings again. I hope you go out there and start to conquer your morning routine. If you need help, I've included a free blank checklist to get you started. You just listened to the post titled, Create a Morning Routine in Three Easy Steps by Kara Harvey of a apurposedrivenmom.com. Thanks so much to Kara for letting us share a post. And if you're interested in checking out more of our stuff or would like that free blank checklist she mentions, go right to apurposedrivenmom.com slash about dash me. But with that, let's go on and get out of here. I hope you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for the final post of the week where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.